Good afternoon and a very warm or maybe slightly chilly today. Welcome to Great Sacred Music. It's wonderful to have you with us in person and online. This week is the week of prayer for Christian unity, celebrated in many parts of the world. It's a week when we remember both the things that divide us between churches and the things that unite us. Pope Francis and Archbishop Justin Welby are both fond of talking about an ecumenism of action, of the fact that even when we disagree on some of the things we believe, we can still work together, particularly for justice and peace. And it is this focus on peace and social justice that we will be exploring through music today. Churches all over the world and throughout history have seen it as part of their vocation in the world to seek justice and work for the common good, as part of the outworking of their faith. As God loves the world, God doesn't just care about individuals, but about individuals in relationships, and how these relationships and the structures and institutions that go with them impact on the welfare and flourishing of all. Our tradition as Great Sacred Music is to begin by singing a hymn together. And so in a minute, we'll find our hymn, The Church is One Foundation, on the inside of our service sheet. This hymn was written by Samuel John Stone, a 19th century clergyman from Windsor, who studied at Charterhouse School and Pembroke College, Oxford. He had a vision for social justice and for reaching out to the vulnerable, and during his time as rector at All Hallow on the Wall in London, he turned the church into a haven for working girls and women. Stone's faith was deeply rooted in scripture. And when John Colenso, an Anglican bishop in South Africa, challenged the historicity and authority of parts of scripture, he wrote a set of hymns Lyra Fidelium, 12 hymns on the 12 articles of the Apostles' Creed. The Church's One Foundation was his hymn on the article, The Holy Catholic Church, The Communion of Saints. This hymn is therefore a celebration of unity in the body and blood of Christ as an affirmation of faith. So we remain seated as the voices stand and lead the Church's One Foundation. <coughs>
our next two pieces will be focused on peace and justice in South Africa, a country devastated by the legacy of colonialism, racism and apartheid, and yet a country that has worked incredibly over the last few years to overcome that legacy. The text of the first, A Prayer from South Africa, was written by the South African novelist and anti-apartheid activist, Alan Patton. You might know his very famous novel, Cry the Beloved Country. The prayer asks God for the courage to give and remain in an attitude of generosity towards the world. Patton dreamt and prayed for a great, peaceful South Africa, a nation in which each of the many different groups will be making its own creative contribution. The second piece's lyrics were written by South African Archbishop Desmond Tutu, a theologian and, of course, one of South Africa's best-known human rights activists. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1984 for his efforts in resolving and ended apartheid in South Africa. And his commitment to a peace that is more than just the end of conflict was his commitment to truth and reconciliation work. The lyrics of this prayer reflect the themes of his preaching and writing over the years, with a focus on love that conquers everything. Tutu had a rare gift for looking at creating this future, based on more than the triumph of justice, but on real peace based in reconciliation. The composer James Whitbourne set both pieces to music. Whitbourne studied music at Magdalen College in Oxford before beginning a career as a BBC producer and he's still a regular conductor of the BBC Philharmon Philharmonic Orchestra, the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields, and the London-based vocal ensemble, the choir. Though he's predominantly a vocal and choral composer, you might have heard his pieces for film and TV, including the BBC series, The Son of God. His largest scale concert length work is Annalise, a setting of Anne Frank's diary for solo soprano, choir and orchestra, first performed at London's Cadogan Hall in 2005.
goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through him who loved us. Of all the prayers that can be said to music, the most famous is probably the Lord's Prayer. It is said by Christians of all denominations all over the world. It is said and heard so often that it can be easy to forget its radical potential for justice. The prayer says, we pray for God's kingdom on earth as in heaven, and that is to pray for the God who cares for the, wind the widow, the orphan, and the stranger, to act in the here and now, and for us to join in with caring for the most vulnerable first and towards a world in which every person is able to flourish. The line, give us your all daily bread, is equally challenging in its vision for the simplicity of what we need and the implicit rejection of pursuing what we desire rather than what we need. And finally, to pray, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us, again is a line that calls for the kind of radical, transformative love that Archbishop Desmond Tutu preached about. And so we'll now hear some renditions, two different renditions of the Lord's Prayer. Our first piece was composed by Mykola Leontovich, a Ukrainian composer, conductor, and ethnomusicologist. He composed over 150 choral pieces, both all mostly based on Ukrainian folk songs. He was educated as a priest um, and as a musician at the St. Petersburg Court Capella. After the Ukrainian state won independence in 1917 in the October Revolution, he moved to Kiev, where he worked as a composer, conductor, and teacher. Feeling persecution of the Ukrainian intelligentsia in Kiev in 1919, Leontovich and his family moved to Tolchin, where he set up the city's first music school before he was murdered by a Soviet state security agent in 1921. He's remembered as a martyr by the Eastern Orthodox Ukrainian Church and as a prominent liturgist. He was actually the first person to write liturgy in modern Ukrainian. The second setting of the Lord's Prayer is composed by David Fanshaw. It's taken from his most famous work, African Sanctus, a choral mass composed in 1972, 1972, which features the Latin mass juxtaposed with live recordings of traditional African music. His inspiration for the work came from sitting in a Christian church in Egypt in 1969 hearing the call to daily prayer from a nearby mosque and imagining how it could be combined with Western choral music.
In a moment, we will sing our second hymn, In Christ There is No East or West, another hymn on the theme of Christian unity. It was written by John Oxenham. Oxenham, before he became a hymn writer, was a businessman who had to travel extensively for business, and he started writing to relieve the tedium of long journeys and soon discovered that he liked writing better than business. Oxenham originally wrote this hymn as part of the libretto Darkness and Light, prepared in 1908 for the exhibition of the London Missionary Society on the theme The Orient in London. And this hymn stands out, actually, amongst other hymns written at the time and around the exhibition, because it doesn't bear the marks of triumphalism and colonialism, or the assumptions that you find more generally in that era. Instead, he reflects on the famous text from Galatians 3. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ. And he finds that in Christ, the markers that seem to divide humanity and all people fade, and instead, all are called a disciple, equally loved and equally valued, regardless of where they're from. So we remain seated as the voices stand and lead. Thank you for joining us today. There will be an opportunity at the end for you to donate to your retiring collection. Uh, you can use cash, and if you prefer, there are different ways of giving detailed on the back of your service sheet. And please do join us next week for Great Sacred Music on Thursday at 1 p.m. Again, the details are on the back of the sheet. Um, if you can't join us each week, you can find Great Sacred Music online on our Facebook page or St. Martin's Digital, 24 hours later, Fridays at 1 p.m. If you love choral music, then do also join us each Sunday at 3.15 for Choral Classics, or sister program, led by members of St. Martin's Voices. Now, our final piece will be an arrangement of the traditional, traditional African-American spiritual, Walk Together Children. It's written by Moses Hogan, who was an American composer and arranger of choral music. He was best known for writing settings of spirituals. He was a pianist, conductor, and arranger of international renown. And his works are performed in lots of places, in high schools, colleges, churches, community, and professional choirs today. But mostly he's known for single-handedly introducing spirituals into the standard, standard choral repertoire. And spirituals are a great contribution uh, to worldwide music in their uh, vibrant hope for a different reality in a world that was hard and harsh. Here, the words encourage the people of God not to tire of walking together, but instead to walk, sing, and mourn together, keeping their eyes fixed on the promised land. 